All right, I got the fuselage upstairs. I've got the wing downstairs, and I've got uh, one of the ailerons attached. And so let me take you off the stand. I'm gonna turn off the light, the little bright light, just for this. Because I think I showed you before. I'm gonna try to zoom you in as close as possible so we can all get a halfway decent look at this. All right, here's what we're working with. I think I said it was six by eight, or excuse me, I thought I said it was four by four by four five I was wrong if uh, this is a good picture it's 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 three across three across so there's one two three four five six so it's six by eight so here is what the pattern is going to look like on the bottom I had the area I had to work with was 18 across and uh, 21 inches uh, from, from the front to the back so it's 21 inches so I had to find out what was going to be the what was going to be the sticking point. The sticking point was going to be the 21 inches. So I came in, divided 21 by 8. So the squares are going to be 6.2.625 uh, or 2 and 5 eighths. Um, so there'll be 2 and 5 eighths inch squares. And then uh, I multiply that by 6 to find out how wide it's got to be. So it's going to be 15 and 3 quarter inches. So that's so this here is going to be. Let me see if I can come back. From up here, just just past the leading edge, all the way down here to just right about here, um, and then it's going to go from here all the way on out to here. So when I sit back, that's about the area. When you look at the picture over here, that's about the same area that they've got them in here for real. Um, on these, on the on the the wing struts, there's a little cover in the cover in real life. So I can go back to this. It comes in, attaches here, and then comes out to about here, because it's a, it's a, just a, it's an actual covering that's rotted. Comes out to here. So that's going to be pretty close. If I do decide to put covers on here, which I won't, but if I did, it'd come out to be about here, and that's about the same distance, figuratively, from the, just from kind of looking there. Um, so now uh, I'm not going to start painting yet. What I might do is I might do a cheater on this one. I might call uh, the, the fine folks up at Road Rage uh, Design. Um, it's a it's a it's a sign shop that does vehicle wraps. I've known Mike and Chris for more than a decade, um, and that's normally where I would go. But I've got other friends at the club that also do vinyl, so I can find vinyl. That's not a problem. I may do these out of vinyl and then just lay them up. Um, and uh, if there's one thing I've got, I got two years experience in the sign business, so I know how to lay up vinyl. Um, matter of fact, I still have a little four-inch roll of transfer tape. Uh, that's that's for putting. That's for putting. That's that's what you actually use to transfer vinyl. Um, so so I can do that, or I can paint them. I'm just trying to, and I'm going to make the decision, I'm going to go upstairs and sit around and uh, probably call a couple friends and, uh, and mull, the, mull the idea back and forth to see, figure out if I want to take the time to, uh, to paint them or not. Because it's going to be, it's not just a single step, uh, you can't paint them all at the same time. So it's going to be painting every other row. So it's going to be... I mean, it's going to be two paint jobs either way you look at it um, so it's got to be taped so I would do take you back off again what I would end up doing was I would be coming in here and I would do the first third and fifth rows and then when that dries because I'm I'd wait more than a day for everything to dry because I'm gonna have to put tape back on again so once I get these three done then I can come back and then do the second the fourth and the sixth and then they'll be done so it would so it would be done it would be done in two passes regardless um, I'm just really trying to figure this one out this one's gonna be really goofy um, I mean not not that I can't do it I've done this stuff before I just I got I got to I really gotta think about this one um, so I'm gonna go upstairs uh, kick back make a couple phone calls and uh, 
probably all my friends will say do vinyl, so I'll, I'll, I'll end up painting them. <laughs> you guys know who I'm talking to. <laughs> so uh, let me let me let me figure out how I want to do it, and uh, I'll at least come down and let you know either way. Because if I'm going to spray it, um, I'm going to try to get at least on this wing, at least try to get the first spray done on this. So if I can, because uh, I'm running out of time today. Yeah, it's 3:30. Um, I mean, I can get this, I can get one side done on this one and then get the other, get the other wing, half of it done tomorrow. Um, I got to think about this one. Because if I was painting, if I was, if I, was if, if I wasn't painting that and I was just painting uh, all the bursts, I can have all the bursts painted, you know, give me about three or four hours total time and I can have them all taped up and sprayed um, where this is going to be each one's probably going to take me just as long as it's going to take just to tape up all the bursts because the burst is probably going to be probably won't even be that long it probably take me about an hour about two hours to tape each the all the bursts and then uh, you know five minutes to spray them um, so all right anyway I'll bring it back All right, I'm back down. Everything's a little bit warmer here. It's about 60 degrees out in the out in the spray area, so uh, I've got that completely locked off all by itself. I, I went, I put new visqueen plastics uh, all the way around the outside. Uh, I have the door seal up the best I can with some old towels, um, but it is warming up. It, it was a little bit warmer in there than it is in here. I had to bring one of the heaters back in here again. So anyway. Um, Here's what we're gonna do. I got this little issue I've had for I don't know how long fixed. It was uh, it it just you know a couple years of use and there was just a little bit of crud down the side there and it was just a matter of disassembling the whole thing. Um, so so anyway, so now hopefully less problems with the uh, with the tripod. So anyway, here's kind of where I'm at right now. I started putting the stripes on the stripes on the, the masking tape on. Um, just to get everything ready to go Now I will show you Pivot you back over here. Here's how I am doing this. I'm, I'm Figuring out about how long of a piece I need of tape uh, About yay big will do And then it's just something as simple as this get a relatively clean t-shirt And just stick it to it a couple times and it'll make a big difference. The stuff does still have really, oops, I just screwed that piece up. Uh, the stuff still does have good enough stick to it to get the job done. Uh, hopefully, I uh, won't have an issue with it. And that's, uh, that's the important part. So let me go ahead and I'll uh, get this set up on here just for the first section of taping because it's, I'll just show you the first batch. Um, I'll do a little speedy up with some music, just so you guys can get up and dance. Um, and then uh, after that, you won't need to see it again. But I'll do a little speedy up video of uh, of uh, how I go about uh, getting everything taped up, and it's going to be interesting. Trust me. So let's tilt the camera down and get to work.
All right, let me show you. <laughs> this is what I'm working with, and this is where your mind starts playing games with you. Because this is going to be a full square, full square, full square, full square, and that is not the same distance for a full square, but this is not. It, here's, here's where your mind plays games, is that there's no way that you can get this size square down in this slide. It's just too small. But what it is, is this, this square here is terminal. This is the last one in this row coming, coming in this way. So this is going to be left blank. The square that's going to be in this spot right here comes from here all the way out to this very end because this is my little measuring stick I made. So when you see, that goes from there to the end. So that's, <laughs> so like I said, there's a certain amount of craziness when you're trying to figure this out because because you got you you got one chance to get this right. Otherwise, that's just a big mess up. So I am going to. I've got to I've got to take the aileron off, um, because of how I'm going to tape things up and what I'm going to do to it. Um, I want to take the little hinges off. So the hinges themselves are either going to be black or not and when you look at this one right here and it should be the same way let me take it back off the stand when it take when you'll see it from the other side this is going to be black so this hinge the, the hinge post is going to be black plus the hardware I haven't painted this orange yet because I didn't know what color it was going to be because I want this to be the same color as the paint on the outside so um, yeah, so that's where this is going to go. So this one will be black, this one will be black, this one will stay orange. I just got to find out if I want to leave the stub, leave the mounting spark, spark down here orange until this line, or just make the thing black all the way. I mean, black all the way is going to be the easier way to do it. Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about that after the fact. Uh, but right now, I just want to get, I just want to get the black paint on the, on the wing itself, and then I can worry about the, the, the hinge posts, um, farther on down the line because that's easy. So, um, of course, you know what? Now would be the time to spray them. So, uh, I'll figure it out. So anyway, that's how you tape that. That's just, just so you can see. How the whole process went together for taping it I'll show you what it looks like um, after I get it all masked um, just so that uh, I'm not because I'm burning up a whole bunch of that was about that was a good 20 plus minutes uh, just trying to get just trying to figure the tape out so but uh, yeah this was my this was my savior my little my little marking stick and it's two and two and five eighths two and five eighths from either end of the center. I actually cut this to length, so it doesn't matter which way you hold it, it's still the same. <laughs> so, all right, anyway, um, I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when it's all uh, prepped and ready to spray. All right, we're back in the spray booth and I've got lights everywhere, so it's kind of half blinding me. All right, I've got everything ready to spray. Uh, I'm just doing the fa two final little the two final little issues I got to worry about. Um, what it is, I made a special tool, and it's just it's just made out of wood, but it's got some rounded rounded edges on it. And what that does is that's designed to come on in, because so I need to do just a kind of a light little burnish, just to push this down into where I don't want the bleed under. And uh, that's that's the tough part. Um, because this stuff does not stay stuck forever and I'm doing it on top of fabric so it wants to push and you don't want to stab through the fabric so I've got everything pretty much done uh, you know so I can go back and do this you know a hundred times and it's still going to keep slowly lifting off like it's it's doing what it's designed to do so um, you know, that looks pretty good so I'll get you set up in the stand when it comes time to spray here's the here's the, the aileron and what I had to do with this one, because it was a pain in the butt, I had to tape on the inside of these. So I think, I mean, I can shove something like that down, and I've got everything pretty well taped. Um, I'm just spraying on the top, I'm not spraying under. So I can spray from this angle, 
going this way so that way there's less chance of anything bouncing back it's all taped and sealed so nothing could spray on the outside you know I hope so this will come after this is done because I got to shoot I'm gonna shoot my my shot of clear on it and then uh, I'm gonna wait probably about a minute or two and then I'll be able to go ahead and then uh, shoot the black on top of it right after this so let me just try to put my mind at ease here real quick and then let's start shooting quick and that easy so let's just let this sit all right I hope everybody still got the fingers and toes crossed we're ready to shoot All right, I didn't run away from you. I'm actually spraying the ailerons. Whoa, spraying the ailerons uh, off on the bench. That's so why I'm using this piece just as a blocker board. So they're both, they're both sprayed. There is something funny right here and I gotta show you guys, so hang on. It's not funny like a little smiley face. It's the evil orange. It's the evil pumpkin. Everything else is looking good. You see that? That's orange. One little thing of orange popping through. And I, I gave it another, I gave it a quick, another quick little shot and it's still orange. So it is, it is truthfully so, the evil pumpkin. And that orange is just, it's just not a happy paint to work with. So anyway, all right. Let me get uh, let me get this tacked up, and then I'll uh, I'll bring it back in and uh, for the reveal. With the hopefully you won't see a grown man cry. All right, I forgot all about you guys. I started unwrapping my Christmas presents.
Alright. I don't know how that's looking for you, but it's looking pretty good for me. Alright, here's the only little issues. This, right here, it wasn't a bleed under. It just started lifting the paint up off with it. There's the little dot. Here was the thing up front I was talking about where it's just a little bit, it's just a little bit off. I mean, it's just, you know, who knows, it lifted the paint. All right, here it is. I did not put the hinges back on yet. I got to do that, but I'm going to let everything dry uh, because I've got to have this thing up on my workbench with this side down. So this is not going to get reattached until I'm ready to tape it up and respray it, which will probably be Thursday. So it's going to have uh, four, four and a half days of drying. Um, well, so far, I'm very happy with it. It's so like I said, if I decided to leave it just like that, I could leave it just like that. I just... <laughs> you guys know how tempting that is for everything I've been through on this. But I just, I can't do it. I've got to, it's got to be... If I was going to do something like that, if you look at the build that I did on my quarter scale uh, clipped wing cub, all I did was I needed something to give it direction when it was flying over. It just had to burst on the top. So what I did was I made, uh, I put three blue arrows, you know, forward painting arrows underneath. And they were just, so it looked just like that, except it was one, it was one con continuous piece. Came up to a point here and then it was just a bar going back. You know, and I could have done that to that too, but she had, she had checkerboard, so. I'm, uh, I'm actually quite pleased. So, honestly, with every all the problems I've had with this thing, eh, let me blind myself more. All the problems I've had with this, um, I'm actually very pleased with with the way it came out. Um, and like I said, this is the uh, even though it's a checkerboard pattern, it's on the bottom of the plane. Most people judge. Uh, an RC plane by looking at it from the top <laughs> when it's on the ground. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is just this is just me trying to figure out um, how things are going to work when it comes time to paint the bursts and the, the side stripes on it. Um, so, all right. Anyway, that's enough of this nonsense. I'm going to go upstairs make some lunch. I'll bring the other one down and get that one sprayed uh, today. So you got to see. The shenanigans that uh, I went through to get the first thing put together so you don't need to watch the second part so I'll uh, bring it back if anything catastrophic happens otherwise I'll see you on Thursday